Hi, I just noticed Adobe released an update to Lightroom Classic to version 13, with what looks like some pretty cool new features. So let's do a quick video to get a first look at the three biggest changes, lens blur, edit and export in HDR, and point color. And we'll kick it off with lens blur. Adobe is officially calling this early access, so I'm sure it will be updated from this first version here. But the basic idea is to mimic the aperture on your camera, to blur and add bokeh in the background of a subject. Think of it like the iPhone's portrait mode on the camera, where it tries to blur the background behind the subject. That's kind of what this is doing, but we have more features that we have available to us than on the iPhone. One of the biggest challenges of doing this in software like Lightroom, instead of on a phone, is that the software on the phone has immediate access to the camera hardware. Lightroom, obviously, is not installed on my camera, so it just has the information from the photograph that we took. So let's see how well this does. Okay, so here we have an image. To find the lens blur, we come into the develop module. And over here on the right-hand side, we will have lens blur. When we apply this, it'll take a little bit for Lightroom to analyze the photo. And then we have the ability to adjust our blur amount. So I'm just gonna crank this to 100 so we can see what this is doing. You probably are not going to want to crank it to 100 on every image, uh, just like any sort of edit that you're doing. You're not going to want to just blast it out, but I wanna really show what this is doing here so we can see this effect. And you can see right away what it's doing. We have the depth here in the foreground and the background, almost like a tilt shift type blur here. But what's really cool about this is if you're familiar with 3D, there's a thing called depth maps. And we have that ability to visualize this depth here inside of Lightroom to see almost like, again, a, another analogy might be like focus peaking and that kind of thing where you can see what's in focus. Well, here you can see what the depth is in the image. What Lightroom is calculating is this depth. So if we adjust this, we can see, okay, maybe we want this to be a little bit more in focus. So we can uh, un turn off the visualized depth to see how that affects the image. Give it a second to process here and you can see how that changes it. Now it's not going to change what was built into the image. So when you have your camera and you're adjusting the aperture, of course, you know, that's going to be kind of baked into the image itself. It's not adjusting that, but it's adjusting it after the fact, of course. But it's really cool that we can do this and we can visualize this depth, or we can even update it without actually visualizing it so we can see kind of what's going on here as I'm adjusting. See how what's in focus is changing. Now, Lightroom is going to try to automatically detect the subject in the shot. So we have this here where it's gonna try to detect the subject and adjust this focus range so that the subject is in focus. But of course we can uh, customize this. We can just click wherever we want. Once, if we switch over here, turn that off, switch over here and we can pick, okay, we want this part to be in focus and it's going to adjust the focus range to do that. We can come in here and kind of tweak this around however we want to. Of course, this is really, again, depends on your image, exactly what you're going to do, but I really love this feature. It, it, I think it's gonna be really cool to be able to change how, what is in focus and being able to adjust some of that in post. So I really like this new lens blur feature. And because it has early access, Adobe's going to be adding new features to it. And so I'm excited to see what sort of new things they add to this as well to really um, increase its capabilities. We also have the ability to adjust what the bokeh effect is. So you can see some of, you know, kind of changing how that blur affects. Again, it's really going to depend on what is in your image, how that bokeh affects what's in your image. So Lightroom behind the scenes is kind of calculating what it sees in the image and then trying to um, adjust that lens blur based on what it actually sees in your image. So what you see here in this image, if you try it on your end and you're trying it with a different image, you're gonna get a little bit different results uh, based on what it's calculating, but you can uh, control what sort of bokeh effect you have there. Think of that similar to the aperture on your camera lens depending on the number of blades that you have in your aperture, if you're familiar with how uh, apertures work on cameras, 
depending on the number of blades, will determine the shape of the bokeh itself that you see in the picture. Similar sort of concept, of course, as you can see here, we have some different types of shapes that you have. So perfectly round versus, you know, a little bit more, you can almost see the shape of the blades on the aperture there that Lightroom is trying to mimic. So some really, really cool stuff with lens blur. The next new feature is the ability to edit and export in HDR. Now, you might be thinking, Lightroom has always had the ability to edit in HDR. Well, no, not really. <laughs> it has had the ability to edit HDR images, but it was editing HDR images and then displaying them in SDR, standard dynamic range, as opposed to high dynamic range. Now, let's get geeky for a moment. HDR is one of those things where the whole pipeline needs to support it. If you take photos that support HDR with your phone or camera, and you don't have a display that supports HDR, you won't really see a lot of the differences the same way that you would if you have a display that does. For example, even though I'm using raw photos with a new Lightroom Classic supporting HDR editing, the pipeline breaks as soon as I'm delivering this video to you through YouTube, rendering it down to basically SDR, which means that the final pixels you're seeing are limited to 256 colors per channel. That doesn't mean you're not gonna see a difference as you'll see here once I start editing, you will see a difference. It's just not gonna be the same as you know true HDR on an HDR display. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into this, feel free to let me know. We can do that in a future video. But for now, the best way to visualize this on your side is to show the histogram and we'll start to see that right away in action. So if we switch over to this other image here, we can see in our develop, we can start to do you know any sort of edits that we would do for uh, a raw image. You can see you can start to bring back that sky a lot. We can start to do a lot of things that we've always been able to do with raw images and have a lot of control over the colors in our image. Makes whatever sort of edit you want. As soon as we enable HDR, which is new inside of Lightroom Classic uh, version 13, we'll see a couple things. So I have my histogram open here. Watch the histogram. As soon as I do that, we have our SDR and HDR. Now you'll notice this is red over here. The reason for that is because I am using my Cintiq, which is not an HDR display. If I were to take this over here, I'll insert a screenshot here of taking this uh, Lightroom over to the MacBook display that is an HDR. And as you can see, now the histogram, the HDR is displaying. Okay, so I'm gonna take that and bring it back and we'll, we'll come back to uh, here in the uh, Cintiq where HDR is, even though it's not really um, updating there, or it's not really, it, we can't actually see it truly, Lightroom still does a pretty good job of updating it so that we can see some of those changes. So here we can see as we're, as we're updating, we can see these extra colors and the histograms doing a pretty good job of being able to um, showcase this as best as it can, you know, knowing that it is using, uh, it is SDR, right? So it's not a true, what you're seeing here, of course, is not a true uh, representation because that pipeline between HDR, with HDR has broken as far as this is concerned. And then of course, uh, through YouTube and so on. Um, but that brings us to the next part, being able to export HDR. Now, let's say we are doing an HDR edit and we wanna make sure that on the other side, somebody can see those edits in HDR as well. Keep that pipeline uh, complete. So if you come up to File, Export, now inside of uh, Lightroom Classic, we have the ability to export using either um, a PSD or TIFF, of course, those do support HDR. They are gonna be larger files, as if you've worked with TIFF files and PSD files, they are larger. As you're doing more compositing or more uh, work, of course, you have more capabilities with TIFF files and PSDs, flip side is larger file size. But if you want to share this with somebody that has an HDR display, you want to make sure they see those HDR colors, you can use either the new AVIF or JPEG XL. So those are new in Lightroom Classic version 13, the ability to export those and make sure that people can see uh, the HDR output. So you can see we have the ability for HDR output there. Again, we can get real geeky with this because we're talking about the technical limitations of colors and file formats and displays, but that's an overview of the edit and export in HDR feature new to Lightroom Classic version 13. Now, the next new feature is called point color. 
So in previous versions of Lightroom, we could make HSL or hue saturation luminance changes to the color of our images using eight different colors. Now in Lightroom Classic version 13, we can use point color using an eyedropper on our image to shift our colors with pretty much any number of colors. So let's look at this in action. So I'm gonna hop over to another image here. And to find this, we will find it under the color mixer. So again, that's new in uh, Lightroom Classic version 13. You can see in the mixer itself, they've adjusted, they've changed things around. These are the eight colors that we've had the ability to change the uh, hue, saturation, luminance on in earlier versions of Lightroom. What's new, other than just kind of rearranging things here in the mixer, is this point color. So this is really cool. We can actually use our eyedropper and say, okay, maybe we want to enhance this golden hour uh, feature. So we have this color here. We can do that. We can adjust. We can shift it around however we want to, or we can come in and really just uh, focus on, on just that color and shifting that color, right? So we can adjust the range, you know, how close to that color that we, that the point color that we picked, um, we can start to change the, the hue. So you can see how it's affecting just that color we picked. We also can, just to see it a little bit easier, if we visualize the range, it's only going to show the color that we picked as well as the range around it, right? So we do have the range that we can choose to pick. You can see how it's affecting more or less of her skin tone there. And then adjusting kind of what that golden hour looks like, you know, in this particular shot, you know, a golden hour shot, being able to choose how that looks. And again, of course, um, looks like I'm going a little too far here uh, to make it look a little bit too much. Maybe bring it back down to something a little more natural. Th these are the kind of things where, of course, you can start to uh, tweak things as with anything in you know photography and, and editing there, you can really start to tweak things uh, quite a bit in order to get the results that you want. Okay, so that is a quick look at the point color feature here inside of Lightroom Classic version 13. And of course, there are some more enhancements and bug fixes as we would expect from any release. But that is a first look at the three biggest changes in Lightroom Classic version 13. Before I let you go though, Adobe released another new feature that I'm really excited about but it's not in Lightroom Classic. It's in the regular Lightroom app. I know that's confusing. Lightroom was first launched in 2017, forcing what had been known as Lightroom up until that point to become Lightroom Classic that we're using here. But in 2017, when Lightroom was launched, Lightroom forced you to use Creative Cloud to store your photos. When you imported photos into Lightroom, it would automatically sync your photos to the cloud. There are benefits to that, of course, but there are also downsides. Biggest of those meaning that be constantly uploading to the cloud means you're using more and more storage on Adobe's Creative Cloud. So if you're working with uh, large files, it can really start to increase your storage costs on Adobe Creative Cloud. Now, Adobe has updated Lightroom to allow you to store photos locally. So let me actually launch Lightroom here and we can see this uh, really, really quick. So this is just Lightroom. And before it had the ability, you know, everything was in cloud. Now we have our local storage and we can browse our local uh, drive, network drive, whatever we have, and we can find all of our photos locally. So I know that's not really a huge, uh, amazing <laughs> thing as far as, you know, like the lens blur, super cool stuff. It's pretty straightforward. But honestly, this is one of the biggest reasons that I did not use the Lightroom app because since it was released, I just didn't want to keep uploading my huge raw files to the cloud all the time. <laughs> so I'm really excited that Adobe has allowed Lightroom to have local use. Okay, that wraps up this first look of Lightroom Classic version 13. As always, if you want to see any of these features in more depth, feel free to let me know in the comments. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next project. Happy editing.